Hi, I'm Cece Payon, and this is Reclaiming Your Health. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Reclaiming Your Health. I am your host, Cece Payon. I'm so happy to be here with you this week. Um, I missed you last week. I heard that some of you were even asking questions, even though it was a reboot. So I hope that you will bring those questions uh, to me this evening, if, if they're still relevant. If they're not, whatever, we can have a conversation. We'd love to hear from you. Um, this evening, we are doing a Mediterranean-inspired uh, dish. Here's the backstory to why I have chosen this dish. Uh, my aunt, Monica Doolin, passed away uh, last, well, Sabbath before last in Bakersfield, California. My aunt Monica was uh, very put together. She was consistent. She was one of those people that did things a certain way. And she always felt like she had her finger on the pulse. <laughs> Maybe at one time she did. The one time that I know she had her finger on the pulse was when shish kebabs became a thing. And my aunt had this way of saying, shish kebabs, we're going to have shish kebabs. And it was like this, we're going to have shish kebabs. The only place I've ever had shish kebabs was at Auntie Monica's house. And it was, it was sad and uh, kind of brought a bit of levity to the moment. Uh, when we were starting to clean out her kitchen, I went into one of her drawers. And what did I find? Shish kebab sticks. And so I said to myself, when I do my next show, I'm going to be sure to honor my aunt and, and recreate one of her, her classy dishes that she would present on Sabbath dinner. Um, shish kebabs are great. They are super easy to make. I hope that the way I show you all to make them this evening will kind of take a little bit of the guesswork out. It's not, I'm not making it the traditional way, but it's good nonetheless. And it is a great uh, dish to prepare. Uh, for guests that are coming over, you can zhuzh it up, you can make it as elaborate as you want, or you can make it as simple as you want. It's heart healthy, Mediterranean cuisine, those, that's one of those cuisines that you always hear talk about that they're so good for your health. Uh, the Blue Zones, Dan Butner talks about Mediterranean diets for the olive oil, um, the lemon, the, the fresh vegetables, all those things that are used. We're going to be incorporating some of those. So the first thing is, I hope you all, if you're cooking along, if you're not, remember this. Your shish kebab sticks, you must soak them in water before you use them. Now, if you're using the metal skewers, you're fine, don't worry about it. But if you're using the wood, you must soak them for at least 30 minutes. Anybody wanna guess why? Any, any guesses? Any guesses? Okay, no guesses. The reason you want to soak them is that these will likely be exposed to fire. And if wood is exposed to fire, it will burn and your shish kebab will fall apart. So make sure if you're using wood skewers to soak them. I'm gonna keep them in the water up until the moment that I use them. Now, the way that we're preparing these shish kebabs all of our meat and our vegetables are going to be pre-cooked. Then we're gonna put them on the shish kebabs, on the skewer, and then we're gonna broil them in the oven to give that, that you know, flame, open flame type of feeling. But I like to do it this way because you have a lot more control. One of the things that happens when people typically fix shish kebabs, especially if they're using meat protein, which we aren't, but I'm gonna speak on it nonetheless, the meat takes longer to cook than the vegetables. So you will end up with maybe perfectly cooked protein, but your vegetables will be burnt or mushy or, you know, just not best. And you know me, I'm a freak about things tasting and looking good. So this is how I figured out how to do it. 
So I have uh, in the in the description and in the ingredients, I mentioned that you can you can use whatever vegetables you want to. If you take an overhead shot, you will see that I have on my uh, on my counter. I have some creamy mushrooms. I have some Brussels sprouts, yellow squash, onion, bell pepper, tomatoes, and this is my one of my favorites. This is um, vegan sausage. It's apple sausage. I am, I am perspiring, guys. I'm sweating. Um, this is one of my favorite sausages. I literally just drew a blank. Um, field roast, field roast apple sausage, vegan sausage. It is delicious. I love it, and I love how they kind of like they do it like a real sausage. So I'm going to be using this. And what you're going to see that I'm going to do is I have a tray here. I am going to prep my vegetables. I'm going to put them in the oven to bake for maybe 25, maybe 20 minutes or so. And then we're going to thread them on the skewer. We're going to do a little bit of glaze on them, and then we're going to broil them. So let's get started with that. So we've got our we've got our mushrooms. Now something that I want to speak to you about, oftentimes when people use mushrooms, before they use them, they want to wash them. You don't want to wash them. You know why? Because mushrooms are porous. And if you wash them, they're going to be a mushy mess. So what I do, I take a brush or I take a napkin and I just brush off whatever is bothering me on this mushroom. That's what I do. Okay, so we're gonna take off the stem and then we're just gonna brush and brush them over my sink. That's what you do. And if you all remember, last week I shared that, oh, not last week, week before last or so, that to keep your mushrooms from spoiling, we keep them in, and you know what? This is gonna be a question. Whoever answers this question, I'm gonna send you a bottle of one of the ingredients for this evening, which is my maple jerk sauce. Who can tell me the best way to preserve your mushrooms? Who remembers? You can increase your, your mushrooms, um, their use for sometimes up to, up to a month. And if, you, if you're somebody who uses mushrooms, you know that that's rare because they tend to spoil very quickly when they're packaged, when you keep them packaged the way they are. I'll be right back. I want an answer from somebody. Does anybody have an answer? What's the best way to preserve mushrooms? Does anybody know? Okay, that's enough there. There is, that's right, there is a prize. Can anybody tell me? I'm just gonna cut. We want these to be a pretty good size. I would say like maybe about an inch thick. Yep. No, not freeze them, because if you freeze them, that's even going to uh, create more moisture. So you don't want to freeze them. That's not the way to prolong them. Okay, so we've got that done. We're going to do some bell pepper. You see, I just cut along the edge. Best way to preserve mushrooms. Now, another way you can do these bell peppers is you can actually use um, the small bell peppers. Instead of cutting like this, you could actually use a small bell pepper. You know, like those bite-sized ones, you could use that in lieu of cutting up the big one. So we've got some red, some yellow now. Wow, nobody is guessing, I'm a little disappointed. Glass jar airtight, no, but you might get more mushrooms that way. I would think that that would actually 
closed container in the fridge. Sherlita Jasmine, close but no cigar, sis. That's not it. Anybody else? All right, now we're going to do our onion. I'm not going to, I want you all to keep thinking about it because I really want to give away this jerk, my maple jerk. Best way to preserve mushrooms. All right. All right. So what we're going to do, we've got our veggies. No. Nope, not a close. That's, I'm telling you, Sherlita Jasmine, in a paper bag, you are exactly right. When you get your mushrooms from the store, take them out of that plastic-covered cardboard container. Put them in a paper bag. Just roll up your paper bag. Put it in your refrigerator. You will extend the shelf life of your mushrooms sometimes for up to a month. I know I've bought mushrooms and kept them in that plastic and in a matter of days, it's funky and they're slimy and they're no good. The first thing you should do when you get home from your grocery shopping, take your mushrooms out of that plastic covered container, what's going on with my life, and put it in a paper bag and put it in the fridge, that's it. Okay, so we've got our veggies. I'm just going to line up my veggies on this tray. There's a few different ways you can do this. You can either toss the veggies in a, like a seasoned vegetable um, um, olive oil, or you can do like what I am going to do. And if you like some of these things a little more cooked, you know, you put them in earlier. I actually am actually, I'm actually also doing Brussels sprouts and I cook those ahead of time. So let's take a little more time. So I've got some olive oil here to this. I'm going to add a little onion garlic pepper, garlic powder, a little black pepper, a little salt. I'm going to mix that up. You can add fresh herbs to that, to this. Um, there are all kinds of different things you can do. I don't know why my oven is making that noise. So we use that for much. So we're not gonna do that here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna brush these veggies with a little bit of this oil, this seasoned oil. As I was saying, you can use chopped parsley and basil in here. Um, you could also do uh, fresh garlic. I used powdered garlic, which you can always use. You can use fresh as well. I'm going to do these bell peppers on both sides. Don't know why I'm holding that. That's complicating things. And this is going to go into the oven at about 375 degrees for about 10 minutes, not long at all. If you like your vegetables cooked a little more, by all means, put it in there longer. But you know what I say, I like texture. I don't like mushy things. So for me, they're not gonna be in there that long. Okay, this looks great. And the meat really just has to warm. It doesn't really have to cook. So that's going to go on at the end as well. Oh, the meat and the tomatoes. Tomatoes go very quickly. So if you like tomatoes um, with more of a soft consistency, I would put those in the oven for about 10 minutes at 375. Um, I'm going to put them on the very end when I actually assemble it. I'm going to brush in my um, skewer, my shish kebab, a little bit of sauce, and we're going to boil it. I'll be right back. These are going in the oven. Thank you. 
okay. So that's in the oven for about, what time is it now? 8, 14, and 15 for about 20 minutes. Alexa, set a timer for 20 minutes. Okay, so we've got that done. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to prep our sausage. Now you can use, if you don't wanna use any kind of vegetarian meat, you don't have to. But if you do, make sure that you choose one that is kind of, that has a real nice, firm texture to it because you don't want it to fall apart, which is what will happen. So, Auntie Money, we used to always like to use fried chicken. I'm not a fried chicken fan. That's what she used to use. Me, I just cut the casing down the center. Taking this out, there's one. There's so many things going on in the it's going to be really lazy. And that's the other great thing about doing it the way that I do it. You want to have a whole bunch of different things on it, you have different flavors and different textures. Well, if you are trying to cook it, laden down like that, it really isn't going to work. So I honestly, this, I think this is the best way to do it, is to cook everything individually, assemble it, put a nice glaze over it, and then pop it back in the oven for it to boil. Okay, so I'm going to cut this as well. I'm going to cut it at an angle, just to look a little... a little better, give a little dimension to it. Okay, so those are done. And something that I'm going to, we're going to put this, is actually, we we'll put these on this plate. And something that I added, that really makes a shishkama a meal, is that when we plate it, we're going to plate it on top of the grain. Now, you can use couscous, you can use brown rice, you can use an herb white rice, you can use uh, bulgur wheat, which is what I'm using. It typically goes into uh, tabbouleh. So I have some coarse bulgur wheat that I have soaked in hot water for about 30 minutes, and you see that it just kind of, you just want, you just want to cover it with the hot water and it soaks it up and it made it nice and tender, okay? So while that is cooking in the oven, we are going to work on zhuzhing that up a little bit. And to that, we're gonna add a little bit of red onion. It's funny about this dish. Um, growing up, I hated the taste of parsley. Absolutely hated it. Now it's one of my favorite things. I love how herbaceous it is. So we're just gonna cut a little red onion. I'm trying to mince it kind of finely. I don't like big chunks of onion. I want the flavor to go throughout the dish. So I'm gonna take care. And after I've done that, I'm going to go back through it again, kind of mince it. And I soaked probably about a cup of that bulgur wheat, and um, it's made about a good two cups, if not more. You can see how nice and fine the onion is. It's Nice and fine. Okay, so that's going to go on top of that. And we're also going to use some fresh parsley. Now, if you don't like parsley, you don't have to use it. You can use some other type of herb. You all know what my favorite herb is. You can use some other type of herb, or you can just use scallions or something like that. Um, make sure you wash your fingers. I'm just going to go like this with it. 
I don't want, even though I like parsley, I still don't want big chunks of it in my food. Any questions for me today? I've been looking down quite a bit. Does anybody have any questions? How is your new year coming? This this new year has been a trip. It has been a trip already. Okay, so that's now going to go into wheat. Okay, to this I'm going to add just a touch of olive oil, just a drizzle. Just a drizzle. Sprinkle of salt. Sprinkle of pepper. And we're just gonna mix this up. What would really take this over the top is a squeeze of fresh lemon. This looks lovely. Looks lovely. Taste it. Much more. Touch more salt. So we're going to put this aside. And we are nowhere near our 20 minutes, I know. So let's just chat a little bit. So, you know, one of the things that happens, do you already know what my favorite, did you? No, I didn't say. You all should know because I talk about it all the time. My favorite herb helps to get metals out of your body. So sure, so sure Lipa is gonna get the maple jerk. I've got another bottle of maple jerk for whomever can tell me what my favorite herb is. I'll be right back. Does anybody know? Oh, yeah, that's all I added to the bowl of the wheat was some finely minced parsley, some onion, salt, and pepper. The only other thing I would add to this is lemon or lime. I don't have any lemon or lime. What else do you do with it? Oh, this is great. I mean, you can add chopped tomatoes to this. It, it is absolutely delicious. It's basically tabbouleh. That's basically what this is. But I, you would use a lot more parsley. You would use chopped tomatoes, um, some fresh lemon juice. That's what you would do with it. Cilantro, Crystal. Crystal, is, she got the answer. So yes, the maple jerk will be on its way to you. I already have your address. Sherlita, I do not have your address, so please be sure to share that so I know where to send your prize to. Yes, I love cilantro. All right, y'all. Well, I think this is going to have to be a made for television episode because our time is running out. So let me grab the things out of the oven and we're going to assemble this chick kebab. We've actually done pretty, we've, they've actually done, yes, share with the reclamation project directly, not in the thread. Somebody might show up at the door. Okay, so these are our veggies, and they actually look pretty good. They're actually almost ready. We did them at 375 for about 10 minutes. So that is a good barometer. You could always put them in there longer, but remember, 
after we re reassemble them, we're going to broil them. So Alexa, turn off timer. All right, so let's get ready to rumble. So we have our soaked skewers. We are going to, let's see, what are we gonna do first? I'm gonna put a piece of the sausage on. I'm going to put the yellow squash. So obviously, typically what you would do is you would allow this to cool down a little bit. Okay, so we've got squash, we've got, I mean, we've got the sausage, we've got squash, we've got mushroom, um, onion. We're gonna put mushroom on here. We're gonna put one of our tomatoes on here. And I like to go straight through where the stem is. We're gonna go there. And we're also thinking about color. We want it to be nice and colorful. And the Brussels sprouts that I did earlier, I cut those and I roasted them face down. And this is what they look like. See that? So we're gonna do this. And I think this is a pretty good shish kebab. We can add another piece of meat at this end. Okay, so that's one down. I'm just going to lay it in this nonstick pan. I'm going to work on another one. I've seen people use two sticks at times to do these. Squash. Some of the onion. Got our mushroom. Put another tomato. Remember, we didn't chew the tomatoes ahead of time because it's built pretty quickly. You're, you're welcome to do them ahead of time, but I like them because we're going to broil these on a high, uh, high heat. So I used the red one the last time. Okay. Brussels sprout and another piece of. Okay, so we've got two. I'm going to do one more. Put that in the oven. Onion. Onion. Mushroom. Tomato. I have a girlfriend that loves uh, roasted tomatoes, Lafon. Whenever we go out to have Lebanese food or anything like that, she always orders roasted tomato and roasted onion. I typically like it with something she can eat all by itself. All right. And this goes, push these down. All right, so now that I have these three assembled, and also, if you get a bigger skewer, obviously you can put more on there. I'm going to take my delicious Afkave maple jerk sauce, and we're going to take this Middle Eastern uh, shish kebab, we're going to take it to the islands. So all I'm going to do, my brush, I'm just going to go glaze over this. Just going to brush it. Now you can use, you know, oftentimes people when they prepare this, they've already marinated things. I don't like to do that because I think that it also adds things being uh, over kind of mushy and doesn't have much integrity left to it. You know, I always talk about how I like texture. So I'm going to spread these out. I'm going to pop them in the broiler. I'll be right back. All right, 
So now let's get our plate together. And we're just gonna put some of this right in the center of our plate. This is like a full meal. So this can be a serving for one if you want to, or you can, you know, put it on the table like this for everybody. You can just do a platter with the, whatever your grain is that you're using. Again, this is something that lends itself to any grain. This is not a gluten-free grain, but if you're gluten-free, you can use your quinoa, you can use your brown rice, you can use your wild rice that we discussed and we talked about and uh, that wild rice is actually not a rice, it's a grass, really good for you. So um, there's that, I'm just gonna get our plate ready. I'm just gonna put some tomatoes. Okay. Just going to chop up a little, a little parsley together, decorate our plate. We've gone over tonight, y'all. I'm sorry. I thought this was going to be really quick. The brand of the sausage, it is field roast apple sausage, uh, a vegan sausage. You could get it. And the, the vegan section uh, at, at Kroger's, at Publix, it is literally one of the best things I've ever tasted. I love it. I absolutely love it. They have different varieties, but this one I think works best for this recipe. So now I'm going to get the tray out of the broiler. Be right back. So depending on the strength of your broiler, you know if you have to put it on high or low. I had mine on high for about two minutes and it did the job. All righty. Okay, so here are our shish kebabs. That's one. Here is two. Oh, this looks lovely. And if you want to, you can then go back over this and drizzle some of that amazing, if I do say so myself, maple jerk. Wow, that looks great. And we're just gonna we're just gonna drop big pieces of parsley on top. Yellow! Are y'all ready to have an up close and personal look? This shish kebab? Looky there. Ah. That looks so good. This is 100% plant-based. It is heart healthy. It's full of flavor. We made this dish in about 30 minutes. So this is something, you know, your kids would love. If you have kids, your kids would love to help put this together. Wouldn't that be great? Just like pick out what you want. Everybody, you've got different options and everybody like builds their own shish kebab. You know, it's really fun. It's fun, it's healthy, it's easy and pretty inexpensive. Yes, Crystal, look at that. So this is dedicated to my Auntie Monica, who we will be uh, funeralizing on Thursday. 
Auntie Monica was in my life longer than my mother was. My mother passed away 22 years ago. So Auntie Monica has been my mother. Uh, she was one heck of a woman. Uh, the head of the Reclamation Project, Stan Mackey, he knows her. Um, actually, a group that he sent in for some time in Bakersfield, uh, the day before my aunt passed, they stood at her window and they sang to her. And I'm told that she realized that they were there. That, that touches my heart. Um, we are living in some challenging times. And tomorrow is not promised. I want to encourage you all. Thank you, Crystal. I want to encourage you all to live your best life every moment, unapologetically. Uh, the only person being to answer to is God. Live your life honoring God. Thank you, Lon. Um, live your life honoring him. Live boldly every single day. That's what my aunt did every single day. Anybody knows her, knew her, knows that that is the truth. Um, so thank you for joining me this evening. I hope you all try this. I can't wait to see. I really, what I would love for you all to start doing is taking pictures when you recreate these dishes and post them on my page, post them on the Reclamation Projects page. We want to see that you all are enjoying and doing this. Thank you for listening. My, uh, my company's website address, Afkade Foods. I have a spice line that I put together that highlights flavors from Africa and the diaspora. And I have a spice light. In that is also a tofu scramble. If, so, if somebody who wants to figure out what this whole scramble thing is, you're trying to get away from eggs, it's the great, the best spice to use. It's a great spice to use. Um, crafted by me, lovingly made, and it's great. So thank you so much, Nazareth Clark, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Yes, Don, keep trying. You can do it, you can do it. This is not complicated. Thank you for joining us this evening. I hope you have enjoyed uh, the time that you spent with me and I will see you next week.